So in this video, I wanted to talk about... About a month ago, he released a little album called Gemini Rides. Nothing to write home about, it's just about the best album of the year. Seriously, if not for Kendrick, he would have it. And this has been a very, very good year for music so far. A little backstory on Steve Lacey. He started out making beats on the iPhone version of GarageBand during high school. And from there, he became a member of the band The Internet. On their first album, Ego Death, which came out in 2015, he produced two songs. One of those songs featured Tyler, and Steve would actually go on to work on Flower Boy. He plays the guitar on Glitter, and of course sings on 911 alongside Frank Ocean and Anna of the North. She's what you have, you know. I wanted to make the best possible project that I can with this little thing. Like I recorded everything, like I plugged the guitar in, I layered vocals, mad vocals. <laughs> Um, just on this phone. It was, uh, it's a beautiful experience. Also, I didn't realize this until I dug further into Steve's catalog, but he wrote and produced Pride, which is the best song on Damn. So he was working with Kendrick when he was like 18, which is pretty insane. Almost similar to Tyler back in the day, he's talented beyond his years, and with Gemini writes, he's really made his best work yet. Also, he's bisexual. Just thought I'd bring that up. Okay, I swear that every time Tyler, Frank, or Steve release music, half the conversation is about whether they're coming out as gay or not. Like, I know it's an important part of their music. It is. My issue is when you have these professional music journalists, and that's the extent of their analysis. That's it. Every review of Flower Boy has something about how Tyler used to be homophobic, but now he's rapping about kissing white boys. Or look, Tyler compared cars as masculine to flowers as feminine. Holy shit. Like, look at this interview that Steve did in Vulture recently. Basically, the interviewer is trying to bait him into saying something about how he's gay. Something that struck me this time is the feeling that you're singing more explicitly about same-sex attraction. Was that a point of stress? Blah, blah, blah. And then Steve goes, I thought this was one of my straighter albums. Dude, imagine being the interviewer. Like, their complete, like, their whole take on the album is being completely demolished by the artist that they're interviewing. And then they go, like, trying to cope. You're listing off the names of guys you could be dating in the freestyle. You got bars about the D. And then he goes, that's like one gay song out of ten. So here's the thing. Steve knows that there is some subject matter in the album about him being gay. But he's not about to reply to this interviewer and give a full response because he knows that as soon as he does, that's what all these clickbait articles are going to run with. And then the entire nuance of his album is going to be lost. Anyways, homophobic rant over. Just make sure to watch the ad I put in the middle of the video before you cancel me. The album has this timeless feeling. It has these textures in the production that make it sound like a vintage R&B album from the 70s. But then the lyrics could have been written yesterday. When it all comes together, it sounds otherworldly. And it definitely feels detached from 2022. This is the first new album in a while that as soon as I finished it, I immediately wanted to listen to the whole thing all over again. It's only 35 minutes long and there's 10 tracks, but because of that shortness, it leaves you wanting more. Steve himself described Gemini Rights as a really fun take on Heartbreak. It has all the emotions, but it's almost joking about it. Seriously, who else is making music like this right now? The first song I heard of the album was Helmet which is all about a really clingy relationship that Steve is trying to get away from. Ooh, Steve feels bad that he has to let go and hurt someone else's feelings, but also not really. It's a song about unrequited love, but from the perspective of the person who isn't as attached, which you don't often hear about, at least in as mature of a way as this. These lyrics are so blunt. He's literally like, time to get out, I don't want you around. It's called Helmet because Steve needs one to cope with this person. It's quite a clever way to describe a toxic relationship. Steve sings about rushing into this too quickly, and now realizing that the chase of trying to get with them was way more fun than the actual thing. It's a pretty fucked up song. On the one hand, you're vibing out to the funky, guitar-based production, and then on the other, you're thinking about what he's actually saying. I love it. The next song, Mercury, completely switches things up with a bossa nova-inspired beat. There's so much variety on this album, in both the production and the lyrics. Here, Steve is weighing up the good and bad of being in a relationship. I guess it sort of gets to that Gemini theme of the two sides. In the chorus, Steve sings, Little pleasure, little depression. 
he's questioning whether one is worth the other, which is low-key pretty funny and self-aware. You get the sense that Steve's mind is all over the place, and he can't decide if he wants to get back with his ex or not, which is straining their relationship even more. Towards the end of the song, he's just like, fuck it, I'll just cop a Porsche instead. He's indulging in material shit to numb his problems. <sighs> Relatable. Even if you haven't listened to the whole album yet, you've probably heard Bad Habit. It's kind of blown up. Basically, the song is all about how regret is worse than rejection. I bite my tongue it's a bad habit basically means that Steve overthinks and second guesses himself too much. He sings, I wish I knew you wanted me all the way through the song. I mean, across the album, Steve swings from love to bitterness, like on Amber or Cody Freestyle, which is almost a rap song. But here it's just pure heartbreak done in this tongue-in-cheek way. This is definitely an artist-defining song. It just screams Steve Lacey from start to finish. And I haven't even gotten to the best track on the album yet. Sunshine is a duet between Steve and Fouché. Fouché sings in the background on basically every song, but this is where she really gets to shine. Steve sings about seeing his ex for the first time in a while and catching feelings for her all over again. Fouché sings from her perspective and reveals that she's on the same page. The guitar solo at the end of this song, holy, holy shit. shit. I'm gonna come. Dude, the whole second half of the song is just one of those levitating moments. It's not even like the guitar is doing anything insanely technical, and they're just singing I still love you over and over. But it all comes together, and it's like that moment where you lose your ego and realize you still have feelings for someone. You can really hear the 70s soul influence on Give You The World, which is the final song. It sounds like some vintage Marvin Gaye and Al Green shit. Even though this album is really short, it takes you on such a journey and you feel all of these different emotions. You look at how it starts with Static. It's such a cold and cynical opener to the album. Steve kinda comes off like an asshole, with lines like, new boyfriend ain't gonna fill the void. Or my personal favorite, you fucking yourself, do you feel the toy? He seems so appalled that he let this relationship stunt his creativity, and portrays his ex as someone who's constantly in need of a new thrill. But by the time we get to give you the world, Steve sounds almost apologetic. He's finally ready to open up, but that time is over, and there's no going back. A lot of this album deals with Steve being honest with himself, and becoming more vulnerable. I mean, just look at the album cover. There's two versions of him. The one on the outside, and the one on the inside. I guess this album is sort of like Igor, in the way that Steve is talking about being in the cycle of having conflicting feelings towards his ex. But overall, I think it's way more hopeful than that. The main theme of this album is duality. It's right there in the title, Gemini writes. He has a right to feel all of these emotions that contradict each other. This album is all about accepting that and moving on, which I think is a pretty ballsy message. So if you haven't listened to Gemini Rights yet, I hope I've convinced you to give it a listen. It's just one of the rawest, most creative albums that's come out lately, and I think we'll be talking about it for years to come. Also, one last thing. Steve produced almost the entire album by himself. Like the only track he didn't is a 50 second interlude. Holy shit, I'm gonna come. Alright, I should probably stop, they might think I'm gay.